during the early evening service. Uh, uh, you'll be able to share it then. Uh, but uh, uh, we're going to try and go ahead and preach it tonight through the time here. And I don't want to keep you away from the Lord. Turn your Bibles with me, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter number 9. 1 Corinthians chapter number 9. I was going to try to get a, uh, a Packers joke since I uh, picked on the Bears this morning. And I do apologize, it was not intentional, but I did not find a Packers joke in time uh, because I have to uh, get back over here. My wife can attest this, I was supposed to be here at a certain time uh, to actually practice with her because I was supposed to sing with her. And because I did not practice, I did not get to sing. So that's uh, uh, part of the rules, amen? Yes, your pastor abides by them. So, uh, But anyways, uh, uh, that is what happened. And uh, So no, I didn't get my Packers joke. I was trying to find it. Uh, I saw one earlier in the week, and I thought that would be a good one. And that was one I did not say, but I was trying to remember who posted it. Somebody had posted it on Facebook, and I couldn't remember who it was. But uh, anyways, if I find it, I'll bring it, all right? So, anyways, I'll stick with preaching because that's uh, what I'm better at anyways. I'm not good at telling jokes that I have very often, um, so I'll just stick with preaching here tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter number 9. Uh, let's stand to show respect to the reading of God's Word. Pick it up uh, back in uh, 1 Corinthians. <laughs> we took a little break uh, from that during, uh, uh, during the uh, Christmas holiday series season and then uh, the New Year's, of course. I, I preached a different message last week as well. Um, but uh, we'll pick up here. We left off last time we were together in verse number 23. So we're going to pick up in uh, verse number 24. And I'll read through the end of the chapter. We'll have a word of prayer and then get right into the message uh, here tonight. First Corinthians chapter number 9, beginning in verse number 24, it says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And everyone that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertain, uh, in, uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. I entitle a message tonight, Running Your Race. Running Your Race. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all that you do for us, Lord. We thank you for the testimonies we got to hear of here tonight, Lord. Uh, testimonies of protection, Lord, of provision, of, uh, Lord, just uh, friendships and, and being able to spend time with, with others. And, Lord, we're just so grateful for all that you've done for us. But, Lord, we are still a needy people. Lord, we need you to be here in this place. Lord, I need you. I cannot stand behind this holy pulpit, Lord, without your help. So, Lord, I pray that you would help me. Lord, help me to be able to speak to one of the words that you would have me speak to your people. And, Lord, that you would help them, that age, to have ears that hear and hearts that understand the things that are said here tonight. Lord, that we'd be willing to take each of these things that we hear and apply them to our heart and our life. And, Lord, help us to realize that the race that we're running, Lord, Lord, you desire us to finish the course. I pray, Lord, that you'd help each of us run the race that you've set before us. Lord, that we be, uh, uh, bring you honor and glory, Lord, uh, by finishing that race. Bless our time together. Bless you, uh, your people. Lord, we'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for in advance. In Jesus' precious name, we pray for his sake. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you, may you see them. Running your race. You know, I, I've watched uh, different races. I've... Uh, mentioned this before, I've ran in races before, and, and uh, I enjoy, uh, there's certain races I, you know, kind of, uh, let's change the channel kind of a deal, but uh, uh, there's some uh, races that I, you know, I, I could go without watching the Boston Marathon. That's too long of a race, amen. Uh, but a hundred uh, yard meter or a thousand yard meter uh, dash, or a thousand meter, there we go, yard. There we go. A thousand meter uh, uh, run or something like that. Yeah, then I'll, I'll you know watch and I'll enjoy it. And, and uh, you know it's interesting when somebody you know there's always uh, somebody that's going to be a winner and there's somebody that's going to be a loser. And uh, it's amazing too that uh, we watched a race recently here. I don't remember what what it was, but uh, they were talking about uh, a certain. Oh, it was uh, I think it was the uh, uh, there was some kind of a. 
oh, what was that? Uh, ice skating. It was something, they were going down some kind of an ice skating tube or something over the in the cities, and and uh, uh, they, they, they were racing, and it was kind of an X Games, if I remember correctly, kind of a game. And uh, we were watching that. I was enjoying. You know, the, the one thing they had to do was they had to go up this last ramp. And uh, if they made it up and over, they were able to get across the finish line. If they didn't make it up, guess what? They weren't even crossing the finish line. And uh, there was one guy, he was, uh, uh, they were like, oh, he's going to win, and, and uh, he's going to get it. And, and uh, this one guy, uh, uh, and somebody they didn't think would win, he stuck his skate out, and he actually won because the skate crossed the uh, finish line first, and they actually had to do a photo finish, and sure enough, his skate went across, and, and uh, so he was the one that won, and, and I was like, wow, hey, that's the underdog, that's pretty awesome, and he won the, he won the race. But you know, some Christians in life are satisfied with mediocrity. And in Christianity, mediocrity is often equivalent to lukewarm Christianity. We know what the Lord says about uh, those that are lukewarm. He'd rather spill you out of your mouth. He'd rather you be hot or cold. Amen. But we are in a race. And it's a race against time. And God has put you in this race. And you have to be willing to run. So today I want to challenge you to run your race. And I also want you to think about how you run your race, or you don't run a race, how that can affect others around you. So my hope and prayer is that you would determine to run your race and that you will finish your race strong. First of all, number one, run to obtain your prize. <laughs> run to obtain your prize. I want you to notice in verse number 24. He said, Know ye not that they which run in a race all uh, run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. I have to live my life, all right? I want you to listen carefully to this for a moment. I'm glad I don't have to live the life that Brother Kuhn has lived. Amen? And I'm sure he'd probably say amen to that. Amen? But he doesn't have to live my life either. He may have said, well, you know, it would be nice to go back or be able to be young again. Well, I, I think you would probably say there would be some things you wish could change, and, and I would be honest here tonight and say, boy, if I could go back and, and change some things, there would be some things I would change or do differently, amen? But the, re the fact of the matter is, we can't do that, amen? He has lived his life, and, and I don't want to uh, uh, put him on the spot here, but he's lived his life at least 60 years, amen? At least 60 years. 70. 70 years, all right. <laughs> I was trying to help you, brother, here, amen? <laughs> Work with me here. Work with me. At least 70 years, amen? And I've run this race now in life for 43 years, all right? But my race is different than his race. And his race is different than Brother McCoy's race. And Brother McCoy's race is different than Brother West's race. And Brother West's race is better, different than, than uh, Brother Perkins' race. Do you understand what we're talking about here? Each person has a race to run. I cannot run the race for you. This is your life. I cannot run your life. I'm not here as your pastor to, to tell you what to do. I'm not here as your pastor to, to say, uh, other than if you're my child, amen, then I can tell you what to do. But if you're not my child, amen, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to, to help you in that race. I want, I want to see you finish, amen? And if, I, if you could uh, maybe think of me as... As the biggest cheerleader sitting on the sideline saying, Hey, keep going, keep finishing, keep running the race, amen? I hope you'll know that I'm your, your biggest advocate here. I'm your biggest fan, amen? Man, I want to get some autographs. I, I, I want to get your autographs, amen? Why? Because I want to see you finish a race. But it's your race. And you have to be willing to run it to be able to obtain the prize that God has for you. Paul here, he likened the Christian life to that of a race. And in a race, each person runs, but they run to obtain only one prize. You know, I always, uh, I, I remember growing up uh, when uh, uh, I was especially in grade school and, and just before high school, uh, junior high age, uh, I was going to a Christian school during that time. And, 
I remember at one of the track meets, um, I, I remember uh, there was one of them, I would think it was in third grade. And uh, man alive, I was, uh, uh, you know, I had bolted out of there and, and man, I looked back and I had beat everybody. I was like, man alive, the, first, the close, you know, second closest person was about, about 15 yards behind me. I was like, yes! But you know what? I'll get to that point, I guess, in a little bit here, but I didn't win that race. And I'll explain to you why. All right? But there was one race I remember winning. Man alive, you know what? It was so awesome. I got first place in that race. And, and I remember uh, there was, uh, I think there was maybe uh, about eight, six or eight of us across there. And only three of us got, you know, the, the red and the blue and the white. Amen. That's what they gave out at, during that time. Or the blue, I guess. Blue is the first and, and then red was second and white was third. There was no participation prize. Amen. Amen. Well, you participated. Here's your prize. Amen. No, it's just, hey, those that were first, second, and third, that was it. You know what? In this life, there is only the prize that God has for you. Nobody else can win it. Nobody else can win it. Uh, can, uh, can earn it. Nobody else uh, is going to be able to uh, uh, you know, take your place for it. The prize that God has for you, that's it. Amen. But you have to be willing to run your race so that you can uh, obtain your prize. You have to, uh, 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 each person must run uh, their race to obtain, obtain their prize. So number one, run to obtain your prize. Number one, run to obtain your prize. Number two, there are boundaries in the race that you are running. There are boundaries in the race that you are running. Notice back in our text there, uh, 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 sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter number uh, 9, verse number 25. Notice what it says there. In the beginning of that verse, it says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Paul here, he wanted the church at Corinth to know that they could run, but that there were boundaries during their race. You know, so often people think boundaries are there to restrict. Amen? That's what oftentimes people think of. Uh, people think of, uh, you know, especially uh, uh, teenagers. Amen? How many remember as a teenager there were rules? Amen? And you didn't like those rules too, didn't you? Amen? Right? Boy, I tell you, there are times I remember and I tell my parents, this is the dumbest rule you guys have come up with yet. They tell them, well, this is the rule. Oh, man, this is stupid. I don't like this. But guess what? It didn't change the fact that it was still a rule, and I still had to obey it. Amen? Whether I agreed with it or not. By the way, some of those rules even applied after I was an adult living in my parents' home. You that are adults living in your parents' home, guess what? Your parents say, hey, we want you to be home by midnight, or at least tell us where you're at. Guess what? That's the rule. You're living in their house. You're living under their, their roof. You need to abide by their rules. Amen? And if they say, hey, tell us uh, where you're going to be at, or uh, you need to be home by this time, or uh, we're locking the door. You know my dad, he did? He made sure that he, he, had a, he had the only key to the deadbolt. And what he would do is at a certain time, if he said, hey, we're going to be home by this time, guess what he would do? He'd get up. He'd go to the door. And guess what? It didn't matter how desperate you wanted to get in. It didn't matter uh, if you, uh, uh, you know, even my, my wife, when I, when I first heard that rule, it was when my wife, my, my wife and I, we were uh, courting, and, and uh, her dad had an 11 o'clock curfew. I'm like, 11 o'clock? And she goes, oh, no, you don't understand. That's actually 10 till 11. I'm like, what? We can't walk in at 11 o'clock? She's like, no, nope, that's 10 to 11. 27 years old. Okay. Amen? So I had to learn very quickly. I, hey, Dad, I'm going to be home about this time. 
And uh, this is uh, uh, who I'm out with, and this is when I'll be back. And if I thought I was going to be late, guess what? I'd call him up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> right? You know, the kids are like, what in the world is he talking about? He's crazy. He's doing weird sounds, ain't it? But I remember, you know, calling up and, and Dad, yeah, I'm over at so-and-so's house. Uh, and he goes, okay, what time are you going to be home? Well, uh, could, I, could I stay out until about 12.30? Yes, that would be fine. Okay. Guess what? I had to make sure I was home at 12.30. You know why? Because at 12.30, <laughs> amen? There were boundaries. It taught me that there were boundaries that were good. Amen? You know, in, uh, uh, in a, uh, uh, when, when a shepherd has sheep, <clears throat> he has a, what's called a sheep fold. And in that sheep fold, there's usually one gate in and one gate out. The purpose for that is not to control the sheep. The purpose for that, that the sheep fold, is to protect the sheep. You see... If the sheep get outside the fold, they're more vulnerable to animals of prey. They're more vulnerable to be attacked. They're uh, more vulnerable to, uh, to be killed, amen? And God has put some boundaries in our life. Guess what? You know where we can find those boundaries? Right here, Amen? Those boundaries are there to help you. You may say, well, I don't like some of them. Well, I, I want you to notice that Paul, he, he wanted the church to know that there were boundaries. Boundaries are there to help you. A walled city is easier to defend against enemies than an unwalled city. You think about this. You look at the book of Nehemiah. I don't know if you ever looked at it. or I remember uh, uh, we've had a, a study about it and all kinds of things. I've preached about it. But uh, if you've never read the book of Nehemiah, I would encourage you to read it. There were, there were uh, uh, walls that were broken down. The gates were burned. And, and it says that they were, they were a reproach to the people in that area. And Nehemiah said, hey, come, let us uh, uh, build the walls of, of Jerusalem that we be no more reproach. He said, hey, the, what's happening is this, the enemy kept coming in and kept coming in and kept uh, looting them and kept uh, uh, destroying them. And, and they had no way to defend themselves. We as God's children need to realize, hey, God has put some boundaries, some walls for us, amen, that we ought to be willing to put up in our life. To be able to guard against Satan. Why? He is ultimately always trying to uh, defeat us. He's trying to, he'll, he'll fire our, all kinds of uh, fiery darts at us. And if you have those walls of defense up and say, hey, wait a second. <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, Satan, I know your tactic here. Amen. Why? We're not to be ignorant of his devices, the Bible tells us. We, we ought to be uh, wise as serpents and harmless as doves, the Bible tells us. We need to know that, hey, Satan is out to, to, to debilitate us. But if we have boundaries, they're there for us. And those boundaries are there to help you. The Bible is there to help you, not to hinder you. Here's the difference, though. You have to be willing to submit to those boundaries. I don't know if you've ever seen this meme before. I've seen where there's a a fence and this, uh, 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 you know, uh, sheep runs up to, towards the fence and, and uh, the, the shepherd says, no, don't jump the fence. It's the, you know, the fence is there to help you. And the sheep says, I know what I'm doing. And it jumps over the fence. And what it doesn't realize is there's a cliff on the other side of that fence. And you know, that's exactly what many times God is trying to do in your life. He's trying to tell you, hey, there's some boundaries you need to have. Amen? There's some boundaries you shouldn't be uh, uh, trying to cross or, or trying to uh, you know, run outside of. You know, uh, as I mentioned in that race, there were some boundaries in that race that I was running. As I was running uh, and, and I was ahead of everybody, amen, what had happened was I got outside of my lane. We were sp uh, supposed to stay within our lane. And what had happened was I had shifted over. When I looked over like this, I shifted over one lane. 
Now, I had blew the competition away. If I would have just kept my eyes forward and just uh, said, hey, I'm going to finish this course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this race, I'm going to cross the finish line and not worry about what everybody else was doing or wasn't doing, I wouldn't have gotten outside the boundary. I would have won. You know, boundaries are there to help us. Amen? Don't ever think of a boundary as uh, being restrictive. Oh, there are boundaries in the race that you're running. Number one, run to obtain your prize. Number two, there are boundaries in the race that you're running. Number three, you are running an eternal race. You are running an eternal race. Listen carefully. What it, what it says here in verse number uh, 25. Excuse me, now, uh, verse 25, the middle of that verse. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we and what? Excuse me, an incorruptible. You know, Paul wanted the church uh, at Corinth to understand that the race that they would run would have an eternal impact upon others. Why? We know we're not trying to win. You know, I was going to try to bring one of my trophies. I have, I just don't have a couple of them, all right? They're not very big. And I don't even know where what I don't even know where any of the one of them are. I think there's two of them, and one of them's about yay high, you know, so about that high, and the other one maybe about that high, and that's it. So two trophies I have, amen. And uh, uh, they weren't even for running or anything. It was for uh, I think it was Scholastic or something or A plus or whatever. I don't remember what it was. It had to do with my my grades, but but uh, anyways, that's the two trophies I had. I, I was going to bring one of them, but you know. That crown can corrupt, or that, that trophy can corrupt. Do you understand? It, it can tarnish, it, it can get old, it can get broken. Amen. I think I, I had one that got broken, if I remember correctly. Why? It's corruptible. Amen. But in life, we're trying to run a race to, to reach an incorruptible crown. Amen. Not something here on earth, something eternal. And the problem with a lot of Christians is they get their focus off, off the eternal and they begin to look at the temporal. And then they forget, hey, I'm running in a race and this is for eternity and this has an eternal impact. You know, each person must run their race with eternity in mind. This is not a 100 meter sprint, amen? This is, and listen carefully, this is a lifelong marathon, Amen? Oh, I, I'll be honest, I, I have not run a marathon in my life. I don't think I've even ran a half a marathon, because a half a marathon, I think, is, is it 13.2 miles or something like that? Yeah. Is that right? Okay. I've not even run a half a marathon. Uh, I'm one of those guys, I'm, I'm good for a short period of time and fast, but guess what? Man, I'll burn out. Amen? But in life... You need to realize, hey, this is, this is the long haul. This is for, eternal, uh, for eternity. What, what you do in this life can and will have an eternal impact upon others. If you say, oh, I don't like running this race anymore. I'm just going to do my own thing. There are others going to watch you. There are young people that are seeing you. That are going to react the same way you do. Amen? See, either amen or oh me. Amen? <laughs> but you need to realize, hey, your life will have an eternal impact upon others. And you have to be in it for the long haul. You are running an eternal race. Number one, run to obtain your prize. Number two, there are boundaries in the race that you're running. Number three, you are running an eternal race. Number four, you have to decide to run. You have to decide to run. Look back at our text there, verse number 26. Notice what Paul says. He says, I therefore so run, not as uncertain, uh, uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. He said, hey, I, I want you to know this. I'm going to go ahead and run. I'm not worried about what anybody else is doing. I'm going to run. And I already know what's, gonna, uh, what's coming here. Paul was stating, he said, I, I'm going to decide to run because he knew that he could win a prize at the end of his race, the end of his life. You see, at the end of your life, you're going to stand before God and give an account of what you did with your life that he has granted to you. 
And are you going to stand there and say, well, you know, I, I just decided to run my own race and and I know you said the boundaries were over here, but I decided to run over here. And hey, I did. Uh, I did fine. And God says, "No, wait a second. Because you didn't run this race, somebody else was watching you and decided not even to enter the race because they thought you weren't even in the race in the first place." Amen. It's amazing how your life affects others. By the way, parents, your life will affect your children. Grandparents, your life will affect your grandchildren. Amen? What kind of impact are you going to have on them? What kind of legacy are you going to, are you going to leave them? But are you going to decide to run the race? You know, some will say, well, I'd rather just not run at all. You know, there will be others around you that are watching. You. And if you only knew this, if you knew that you could win and you were on the winning side, wouldn't it be worth it to get into the race and say, hey, I'm going to win. I'm on the winning side. Therefore, I'm just going to go ahead and run. Wouldn't you run? I know I would. I said, hey, I'm on the winning side. I know there's a prize for me at the end of this race. You betcha I'm going to run. Amen? The problem is, is a lot of Christians decide, well, I don't even want to get in the race. I don't even want to run and run. I, I just want to sit on the sidelines and, and I, don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to run this race. But you know what? You have to make that decision for yourself. Will you run your race? Number one, run to obtain your prize. Number two, there are boundaries in the race that you're running. Number three, you are running an eternal race. Number four, you have to decide to run. And lastly, number five, you must have self-control during the race. You must have self-control during your race. Notice uh, uh, verse number 27. He says there, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Amen. No, the Apostle Paul wanted to make sure that his flesh was under control so that he could run the race and so that he wouldn't be a hindrance to others during this race. You know, I remember one race that I ran. It was a, uh, a relay race. You, know, you had the baton, you had to pass it off. And I remember in this one particular race, only because uh, I don't remember the young man who he was or where he was from, but I just remember what happened. There was uh, three of us. This uh, young man had come along and uh, and there were three of us kind of running neck and neck uh, with each other. And uh, I could kind of see out of the corner of my eye the two of them were kind of, kind of pushing against each other. And you're not supposed to be pushing against somebody else. You're supposed to be just running. And uh, what happened was that young man ended up, I don't remember if he, he tripped and then he went, as he was falling, he went to trip the other kid or what had happened. But uh, the one had tripped and then he tripped the other one and and uh, both of them fell down, but the one young man, because he tripped the other young man, he got disqualified. And the other young man, uh, of course, he had gotten up and, and went ahead and finished the race, and they, if I remember right, they came in second uh, anyways, but, but uh, uh, no, matter, no matter what it was, we, we have to realize this. There is going to be a constant battle between the flesh and the spirit. Amen? There is a constant battle every single day. And the worst enemy in your life is the person you look at in the mirror every single morning. My flesh is my worst enemy. Too often in life, you know, Paul, I mentioned this this morning. Paul even said, hey, you know, the things that I, I should be doing, I'm not doing those things. The things that I'm, I shouldn't be doing, I find I'm, I'm doing those things, and it's because of the sin that's in me. 
Now, he wasn't making excuses for that sin. What he was trying to help you understand and help me understand is this, that there is always a battle going on between the flesh and the spirit. And you have to be willing to say, hey, what am I going to feed most? You know, if you had two dogs here, and we had, uh, actually, if we had two dogs that were the exact same size, but we only fed this one dog over here. And this dog over here, we, we starved. We didn't feed it, we didn't give it water, and every single day we fed this one food, and we gave this one water. And this one over here is called the dog of the flesh. And this one over here is the dog of the spirit. Which one do you think is going to end up stronger? Dog of the flesh. Whichever dog you decide to feed is the dog that's going to win. Amen? That's right. You have to be willing to say, hey, I'm going to be like Paul. I'm going to bring, a, uh, bring under my body. I'm going to put it in subjection. I'm going to exercise some self-control and say, hey, I'm going to feed the Spirit because if I feed the Spirit, I know it's going to help me to run the race that I need to run. And if I feed the flesh, then I know the outcome. I know it's not going to help me run the race. Matter of fact, my flesh is probably going to cause me to go by the wayside. It's going to cause me to be on the sidelines, if you will. And you have to determine to have self-control during this race. Running your race. You have to be willing to run your race. I can't run it for you. You have to realize, hey, you need to run the race to obtain your prize. There are boundaries that in this race that you're running, and God has put those boundaries in place. But you're running an eternal race. And your, your race, how you run your race, and if you run your race, will affect others. But you must have self-control while you run this race. How about it? You ready to run your race? Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. If your head bowed your eye closed, nobody look around. I'm going to ask just a couple of quick questions, and we'll have him of invitation. I want to invite you to come and talk to the Lord. Come and do business with him. If you heard tonight, say, Pastor Cow, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure if heaven's my eternal home. If I were to die today, I don't know where I'd spend eternity. Pastor Cow, in this brief prayer, would you pray for me? Would you take that need just by slipping your hand up and slipping back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Pastor, pray for me. I don't know if I'm saved. Would you pray for me? Yes, thank you. Anybody else? Pastor Cow, pray for me. I don't know if I'm saved. Would you pray for me? The other question is this then. You say, Pastor, I don't want to say that I'm on my way to heaven. <clears throat> but God spoke to me tonight about some things that are hindering my run. That are hindering me in this race that I'm running. That I'm supposed to be running. Or maybe you say, boy, I've just kind of not, not really been in the race at all here. I've been just kind of out of it. You know what? We're in a race against time. If God's going to heart here tonight, you say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I realize there's some things that are hindering me from running like I should. Pastor, would you pray for me? Would you indicate that need just by slipping your hand up and slipping back down? And I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are hands all over this auditorium here tonight. Yes, thank you. I see this one back here and this one over here. This one over here as well. And this one back here and this one up here. Anybody else? Thank you. We still come down. Pastor, pray for me. God spoke to our heart. Would you pray for me? Is anybody else like that here tonight? Here's what I'm going to encourage you to do. In just a moment, we're going to have an invitation. I want to invite you to come and talk with the Lord. Come and do business with Him. Won't you come? Won't you come? Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts tonight. Lord, we do thank you and praise you for your Holy Spirit doing His work. Lord, I pray that he would, he would continue to do his work yet here in just a few moments while we have this invitation time. And Lord, I pray that we would see a people being willing to get into the race if they're not in the race or being willing to, to uh, uh, talk to you about those things that are hindering them from running that race. Lord, I pray that you know, we go out of this place that change people, different people. 
Lord, we'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for it in advance. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.